Hey everybody, Q Paul here. If you've been studying Spanish for a while and you're frustrated because you're still having trouble carrying on a conversation with someone beyond just basic greetings and small talk, then this video is for you. I'm gonna explain why this might be happening to you because this is actually really common and I'll be walking you through a technique that will really boost your ability to be conversational in Spanish. Oh yeah, and in case you can't tell, I'm filming this on my morning walk because I'm really busy and uh, I'm trying to lose 10 pounds that I put on at two all-inclusives in Mexico recently and uh, well, just trying to consolidate my time. All right, let's get started. To be able to carry on a conversation in any language, you're going to need to be able to do two things. One, understand what the other person is saying, AKA listening comprehension, and two, be able to create sentences in real time to keep up with the flow of the conversation. This video is gonna focus on the latter. I plan on doing another video to share tips about how to improve your listening comprehension. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that one. So let's talk, fell in the hole. <laughs> so let's talk about being able to create sentences and spit them out in real time in Spanish. If you're struggling with this, especially in cases where the sentence may be longer or the conversation is uh, possibly more advanced, and you just can't translate fast enough, I'm telling you, you're not alone. This is super common. It's even common for people who may be considered high intermediate or even advanced in Spanish. So why is this? Well, I mean, it could be a variety of different factors, but I have found a common thread in uh, people over the years that I've tutored or tried to uh, teach Spanish to, and that is they have developed the habit of trying to translate the entire sentence in Spanish in their head before they spit it out. So why is translating your head first a bad idea? Well, I'm gonna do a little demonstration to show you why, but I'm actually gonna use English to do it. As I said, what I'm talking about refers to any language. So in this one, Paul one is a native speaker of English, speaking English at a normal rate. Paul two is an advanced speaker of English, but he has the really bad habit of translating an entire sentence in his head before he spits it out. And I'm going to simulate that by just saying the sentence to myself before I say it. Hey Paul, how's it going? Good, how are you? Not bad, not bad. Hey, I didn't see you this last week, and uh, what did you end up doing? Well, my wife wanted to go shopping, but I convinced her to go to the movies. Oh, that's great, that's great. What did you end up seeing? I don't remember the name of it. It's that one where Tom Cruise, he's a pilot. So do you see why that doesn't work? The gaps in the conversation are just too long. And if you factor in that you're gonna be trying to translate in a foreign language in your head, that's gonna add some time to it. It just, it doesn't work. And people get stuck, they plateau at that level and they never become conversational. So what's the solution to this? Well, it's actually a two prong approach. The first prong is to start viewing the language as a series of sentence fragments or phrases strung together instead of individual words strung together. This means that you're actually gonna start studying some of these things as phrases, and then when you're spitting them out, it's not like you have to think of a word, then the next word, they're coming out as a phrase, and it's giving you the time to think of the next phrase to stick in after it. Here's some examples of those sentence fragments or phrases, or some people call them chunks. En cuanto a, regarding. En cuanto a lo que me contaste ayer, in reference to what you told me yesterday, estar a punto de, to be about to do something. Estoy a punto de hacer ejercicio. I'm about to do exercise. Tener ganas de, to feel like doing something. No tengo ganas de hacer ejercicio. I don't feel like doing exercise. ¿Qué tal si? How about? ¿Qué tal si nos quedamos en casa? How about we stay home? This is bringing us to the second prong in our strategy because we know we can no longer try to translate the entire sentence in our heads before speaking, right? We gotta stop doing that. So, I like to think of it like, your sentence or even your paragraph, whatever, is kind of like a train and you need to get it moving. You need to get that locomotive out because conversations are time sensitive. That locomotive is that first phrase or word or something so the other person knows you're speaking. And then what you do is you start popping in other phrases or words to make a train. So you're effectively building your sentence as you're speaking. And this is very different than what you've probably been doing before. You know, I'm going to give you some examples as we go through. Now, sometimes the conversation's going and you don't even have that initial phrase yet for that locomotive to even start your train. There's a couple things you can say to slow the conversation, gives you a moment to think, and then you can start popping in your train cars. Here's some of my favorites. Sabes que? You know what? Gives you time to pause, right? Creo que, I believe that, or I think that, hmm, gives you time to think. And if you take pauses between these train cars, it's not a big deal unless they're really long like they were in the example. 
But if you say, creo que debemos ir al cine, I think that we should go to the movies, you're still conversational. It's not so awkward that you just derail this entire thing. Another good sentence starter to just pause for a bit is, es que it's just that. If you need a lot of time, you can pop la verdad, the truth, in front of that. La verdad es que the truth is that. That one gives you a lot of time to think. So let's say we're in a conversation. Somebody's talking to us. We can use a few of these. Sabes que la verdad es que no tengo ganas de hacerlo. You know what? The truth is, I don't feel like doing it. That was just me stringing phrases together. You know, with this technique, you're not limited to just creating like one sentence, kind of like you were before. You know, you actually may end up spitting out several sentences before the person ever responds. Here's an example using some of the phrases I just showed you. I'm gonna go ahead and put in some pauses like I might if I had never made this type of sentence before. You know, I'm just kind of building these in my head. What you're doing effectively is using deductive reasoning to be able to speak Spanish. You may actually make a sentence of something you've never heard or read in your life. Isn't that cool? En cuanto a lo que hablamos ayer, la verdad es que estoy a punto de mudarme a México, así que no tengo ganas de hacerlo. In reference to what we talked about yesterday, the truth is I'm about to move to Mexico, so I don't feel like doing it. Since I'm using a set of phrases, when I have words like, you know, mudarse, to move to a place, it's giving me time to just kind of plug those in. That's what I'm doing. I've created like formulas and I'm just plugging in other vocabulary. That's what allows me to say a wide variety of things utilizing these same phrases. You know, I've taught this technique for years and I've had students tell me, well, what if I get the sentence wrong and, you know, right from the beginning and it just kind of fizzles out. In other words, you know, like the train derails. So what then? What do I do? Well, you do the same thing you do in English when that happens, you know, you just recover and start again. That's, that's never happened to you in English? Well, yesterday he told me, well, I saw Jim at the market and he told me, see, that was a train derailing and uh, got back on the tracks. I mentioned this technique in a video earlier this week about how I became fluent in Spanish, my journey about that. Um, it was near the end of the video. So I know from the Google Analytics that only about 33% of the people who saw that video made it to that part about these techniques. That's one of the reasons why I decided to dedicate a separate video to the topic. Several of the people who actually did watch the entire video asked me where they can find lists of sentence fragments or phrases to use, um, chunks, whatever you like. For some reason with chunk, I keep thinking food, like, I don't know, chunky chocolate chip cookies or something. Sorry about that, I uh, went off on a tangent there that went longer than that. Um, one of the places you can find information is obviously on the internet, but you gotta know what to look for. Well, what we'll be looking for is something called locución or locuciones. And what a locución is, is exactly what I've been talking about. It is a sentence fragment um, consisting of, say, two or more words that are put together in Spanish that have a particular meaning. It is exactly what we're looking for. When you type in locuciones, you're going to get a lot of different sites, um, including examples here of uh, some of these fragments. If you're at a high intermediate or advanced level, then these Spanish only sites are probably fine for you. Um, if they're not, then you may have to try to find some English sites that share some of these. I don't have any links for you. There are different types of locuciones. There are some that deal with adjectives, adverbs, nominal ones, um, conjunctive ones, so you can put sentences together. There's all these different kinds. So jump up here to adjective. So you have here, me compré ropa de segunda mano. De segunda mano is a locución. It's three words together that mean second hand. So when you learn it now, you're like, oh, I know second hand is de segunda mano. Once you find a section you like, you can do a specific search for that. You know, like let's say um, I look up locuciones preposicionales. And I get here, here's 50 examples of those. Click on that, scroll down, ah, we get a whole bunch of them here. Again, more for our intermediate or advanced folks because there are not English translations here, but there are a lot of great um, locuciones here. I like the second one, a cargo de, means in charge of, like, quien esta a cargo del proyecto? Who's in charge of the project? Come down here, a partir de, it's like beginning from, or from this point forward, like, a partir de hoy, beginning from today, great sentence starter. A pesar de, in spite of, 
tons of them here. Another option you have is to follow this channel. I do a lot of videos about certain sentence fragments, especially those that trigger the subjunctive, so you'll know when to use it every single time. For example, I recently did es mejor que plus subjunctive. It's better that something. Es mejor que nos mudemos a México. It's better we move to Mexico. I also plan to do some videos just focusing on the different types of locuciones, which is a word you just learned today. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss any of those. And uh, I think that's about it for today. Until next time, hasta luego.